everyone welcome to the session so now continuing the series of stats i hope that you are really enjoying that and until so far we have covered up the measures of dispersion where i have talked about two important parameters and we have seen what are the pros and cons of both of them right we have talked about range and we have talked about iqr if you haven't watched that yet please do watch that video before watching this particular video okay so here i am talking about the last important measure of a dispersion which is a standard deviation and variance it's pretty much important to understand this this particular measure as well because maximum number of times you will observe whenever we are doing a project implementation which i will for sure do in the upcoming part of the videos you will see that i am focusing on this variance part at most why and what is the relationship between standard deviation and variance i'll let you know in this session so whenever we are talking about a population variance so i hope that you all know until now that there is a very big difference between a population and a sample whenever i am saying sample it's a subset of a complete population that we have and i think that's the very first basic session of stats that we have already covered about about and now i am expecting that that you know those concepts pretty well so when i am saying population variance so the formula to calculate that is 1 by capital n where obviously the capital n is indicating how many total number of data data points that you have or how many total number of records you have summation of i equals to 1 to n the value of xi minus the value of mu now here this mu is indicating the population mean okay whole square so with the help of this population variance you will be easily able to understand that whenever i am talking about a variance it is nothing but i am trying to see that how far my data is with respect to the population mean so if i'll just try to maybe do one thing here if i'll just try to demonstrate you one simple diagram of a normal distribution so let me do that first so here if i'll just try to draw this something like this and then on top of that i am trying to do, draw like this so what i am saying if suppose in this normal distribution this is mu so what i am trying to see here is that i am just trying to see with respect to this mu which i am calling as a population mean so these parameters these notations you should know that what does that mean so mu indicates a population mean so what i am saying whenever i am talking about a variance or a standard deviation standard deviation or i am talking about a variance so let me talk about variance itself and then i'll say that there is a very simple relationship between these two words so here if you will observe i am trying to find out that how many as per each record i am looking for how much data is dispersed with respect to this mean right whether you are saying that your sample points are here or here or here or here so i just want to look for that how far they are with respect to this population mean that's why what we are writing as a formula 1 by capital n summation of i equals to 1 to capital n value of xi minus mu whole square this is something which i am saying as a population variance right so this is something which i am calling as a population variance now when i move towards the sample variance so here we are talking about a population population variance but when i will talk about a sample variance so now you know when i am talking about sample variance means i am picking up a sample of data from a complete population so sample variance indicates 1 by small n now here you can clearly understand that this small n is something value which is very very lesser as comparable to the value of capital n 1 by small n summation value of i equals to 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square now this x bar indicates something called as sample mean obviously the formula to calculate the population mean or a sample mean is same only that is the summation of all the data points that you have divided by the n value but here the notation is somewhat different when you are saying population mean i am representing that by mu when i am saying sample mean i am representing that by x bar here 
this population variance is also known as sigma square and this sample variance is also known as s square now here if you will see everything is same here it's n minus 1 not n everything is same but here the only difference is that in the denominator in this case i am writing it as capital n where capital n belongs to all the data points that that that, that i have and small n indicates here it is small n minus 1 now one interesting question which i will give you as a part of this topic after we are moving towards the end of the session just wait and watch so just watch this particular session at the end of the session i'll give you one interview based question one or two so here this is something which will basically helping us to determine that how much data is varied with respect to the mean the standard deviation is nothing but is the square root of this term so standard deviation is represented by only sigma so as you can see it is nothing but square root of what we are having as a sigma square which is 1 by capital n summation value of i equals to 1 to capital n xi minus mu whole square so what i am doing here it's just that i am doing a square root of that that's it similarly for a sample variance now one interesting interview question which can be asked from you and i will be waiting for your response because i'll not discuss that answer in this part of the video i just want to you to explore for this first and then i will make a separate video for that very vastly asked question you, i hope that that question is coming up in your head as well that when i'm talking about population variance i'm doing a division by capital n but when i'm talking about a sample variance i'm doing a division by n minus 1 right if you will observe everything is same this is population mean this is sample mean okay making sense here i am dividing it by capital n here i am dividing it by n minus 1 the question here is the question here is that why in sample variance why in sample variance we are dividing by a denominator we are dividing by a denominator which is n minus 1 why not a simple n why not a small n here what's the issue behind that try to do some research over this question and give your answer in the comment section i'm looking forward for that again this is very widely asked interview question and if you are going for an interview be prepared for this question as well because i have encountered this question a lot of times in in the interviews so it's very widely asked because this basically testing you that how much good you are in terms of the concepts with respect to the stats so do let me know, know the answer for that now coming uh, again with respect to the presentation part this is what we have seen right so we have seen that variance is another measure of dispersion which is basically checking that how far the values are with respect to the mean either it be population mean or it will be sample mean now okay this part is done perfect now this is again a very important topic maybe i'll cover up this topic in the next part of the video where i want to talk about that how as a standard thumb of rule the data is spread across according to a given standard deviation and the mu value so if someone is saying to you that i have the value of mu and sigma can you tell me how much part of my data is spread across the given distribution you can easily tell that with the help of this graph i'll try to explain this graph in the next part of the video till then try to solve that problem which i gave to you that is why sample variance has denominator n minus 1 second important question which i want from you all to just do the exploration part we have studied that what is standard deviation and variance all about so what do you think that when i'm saying data is data closely clustered or has a wider range of values around the mean in what case the standard deviation is low so if i'm saying that my value of standard deviation is quite low what does that mean what's the internal meaning of that will you say that in that case data will be closely clustered around the mean or will you say that at, the, at that point of time it will be having a wider range of values what do you what what, is, what do you think what's your answer so these two questions try to write down the answers in the comment section we will for sure try to discuss these questions separately in a separate video where i'll talk about that what and why is the reason for these particular answers 
Till then, I am waiting for your response. With this, happy learning to all. Bye bye, everyone, and I'll see you all in my next upcoming video.